Hello everyone, let's graph some simple rational functions. So when I say a rational function, I mean there is a, a function with an x in the denominator. These are called rational functions, okay? So if you have a variable in the denominator, the most important thing you take right away is that you can't divide by zero. So this says whatever that denominator is cannot be zero because you would be dividing by zero. These are going to have asymptotes, so vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So the first thing we'll do is we'll pay attention to the shift, and it's the same as all of our other functions. On the inside of the fraction, this will move our left and right, and on the outside, it will move up and down. So we'll identify where our asymptotes are, and then we'll plot some points. Once you get the hang of these, they're pretty straightforward, because you know how functions move now. We just have to set up the asymptotes. So in the first problem, this will be like our parent function. It's just 1 over x. So x cannot be 0. I'm going to put that in the middle and say that is undefined. Okay. Now, x cannot be 0, so that means there is an asymptote right here. Now, rational functions also have a horizontal asymptote. And since this thing has not moved up or down, like saying plus 0 is kind of silly, there is also an asymptote on the x-axis. Okay. So it's never going to hit either the x or the y-axis. Our vertical asymptote is x equals 0, and our horizontal is y equals 0. <clears throat> now, once you have the asymptote, what you're going to do is go to the left and to the right of that. So I'll go to the right and to the left, and what I'm going to do is just plug those in, and this is really easy. When you plug in 1, you get 1, and when you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1. So these are points on the function at 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. And since I know the end behavior, the asymptotes are determining the end behavior, I don't really need to keep doing this. I'm just going to draw the function kind of like along the asymptote like that because that's how the end behavior will be. And then I will connect them, and it looks something like this. Okay, That's one of the branches. This is called a hyperbola. That's one of the branches, and the other one will be right here. So I'll draw that one like this. And it's just important you realize they're getting closer and closer to the x and y axes, but they are never going to get there. Okay, so that is our rational function. These are called the branches, and this shape is called a hyperbola. <clears throat> now, when we talk about domain, we're talking about x values. So you can see this thing goes forever to the left, but then you have to pick up your pencil when you get to the asymptote. So the way we say that is we say negative infinity to zero. That's this part of it, but we also want to include this part. So we pick up our pencil and we say union zero to infinity to the left of 0 and to the right of 0, but we use parentheses to indicate 0 is not in the domain. It is not inclusive. The range is going to be very similar. We're going down forever until we get to 0, so negative infinity to 0. Union, we put our pencil back down at 0, and we go up forever, so 0 to infinity. So there's two parts to your domain and range, and you'll see how when you know where the asymptotes are, these numbers are going to show up in both of them. That's our parent function for rationals. Now let's actually move it around and we'll make it negative. So x plus 3 moves the asymptote, the vertical asymptote, left 3. So that is at negative 3. First thing I want to do, x equals negative 3. y equals negative 1 is the horizontal asymptote, so I will draw that right there. So the sort of center of your hyperbola is right here at negative 3, negative 1. That's how it's moved, left 3 down 1. I'll put negative 3 here, and remember that's undefined because if you plug negative 3 in, you get 0. To the left of negative 3 is negative 4, and to the right is negative 2. <clears throat> now, these are easy to plug in as well, but you've got to be a little more careful. Negative 4, negative 2 over, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So this is 2 minus 1, which gives you 1. Negative 4 would be at 1. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, Wait a minute, I feel like I did something wrong. Negative 2 over negative 1 is 2. Huh, we're okay, it's at 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 is at 1 right there, okay? And now I'll do the same thing with negative 2. So if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 over positive 1 is negative 2 minus 1, which gives you negative 3. So negative 2 is at negative 1, 2, 3, right here. So this one's going to be a little different because it's got a minus sign. So instead of looking like this, see how the branches are in the top right and the bottom left? Here they're in the top left and the bottom right. It still follows the end behavior like this, 
but it's bound by those asymptotes. So it's like, there we go, there we go. And then up here, same idea. Okay, but kind of weird. There we go, looks something like that. Okay. Uh, the domain is negative infinity two, so it's forever left until you get to the asymptote, which is at negative three in this problem, union. Then you put your pencil back down, negative three to positive infinity. So this number right there will always be the asymptote. That's for the domain. And this guy right here is going to be for the range. So negative infinity to negative one, union negative one to infinity. Negative infinity down up until you get to negative one. You got to pick up your pencil and then negative one to infinity. So yeah, notice how this minus sign makes the branches flip. Okay, this used to be down here, but it gets flipped over because it's got that minus. Let's try another one. First, identify the asymptote, x equals 2 and y equals 1. So x equals 2 is right here, y equals 1 is right there. Okay. All right. So now we know where the sort of center of our hyperbola is. I'll put 2 in the middle, that's undefined because you can't divide by 0, and then we'll try 1 and 3. When you plug in 1, 3 over 1 minus negative 2 is negative 1, so this is negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So 1 is at negative 2 right here. And when you plug in positive 3, that's 3 over 1 plus 1, which is at 4. 1, 2, 3 is at 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. Okay, so now we have in order to pair in either sort of quadrant of our hyperbola, now I see to draw it because you're not going to get past these asymptotes. They are telling you the end behavior. It's pretty good. I'll do the same thing down here. Cool. Okay, so domain negative infinity to the asymptote is 2 union 2 to infinity, and then range negative infinity, the horizontal asymptote is 1, union 1 to infinity. So to the left of 2 and to the right of 2, that's the domain, below 1 and above 1, that's the range. So they're all going to feel pretty similar, and you're going to notice that when you pick these numbers to the left and the right of the asymptote, it makes it really easy to plug in. Two more. First, write 3 down 2. So write 3, x equals 3, down 2, negative 2. So right 3, down 2, our center has moved from 0, 0. Okay. Now when I plug in 3, I know that's undefined, so I'll try 2 and 4. When you plug in 2, 1 over negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Uh, when you do minus 2, you get negative 3. So 2 is at negative 1, 2, 3 right here. And when you plug in 4, 1 over 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is at negative 1. There we go. And again, now you just draw it. So you're, you're boxed in by these asymptotes. I'll try to draw all of them and connect them. Something like this. Okay. And something like this. Now, these are not actually horizontal. I'm using the tool to help me draw it, but they are getting very, very close to horizontal. Okay. The domain is negative infinity to the vertical asymptote, which is 3, and then 3 to infinity. And the domain is negative infinity to the horizontal asymptote, and then above. Okay, One more. So the last one goes right 1, up 1. So x equals 1, y equals 1. So x equals 1, y equals 1. Those aren't actually on the function. That's why we make them dashed lines. And now I'll plug in 1, that's undefined, so 0 and 2 are what I'm going to plug in. When I plug in 0, 2 divided by negative 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. When you plug in 2, 2 over 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. So 0 is at negative 1, 2 is at 3. Yep, that looks good. And again, I'll draw it like they're asymptotic. Something like that, okay, and something like that. Okay, looks good. Domain, negative infinity to the vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote to infinity. Since they're both 1, the domain and range appear the same. Okay, but these are describing x's and these are describing y's. 
All right. So that's it for the simple rationals. If you've got a homework assignment that goes with that, go ahead and get that done. Hit that like button and smash that subscribe.